So I want to have a semester review. So take a look at the Java programming fundamentals that we've done. So this semester we covered a, a comprehensive range of topics in Java programming, from basic syntax to advanced oper uh, advanced object oriented programming principles. So let's review each topic in detail. So uh, just look at some of the basics. Remember that there's uh, we have our syntax, the basic structure of Java programs, including classes, methods, and our statements. Um, and our data types, our primitive data types, uh, such as their integers, our doubles, our uh, characters, which are our booleans, and um, longs, bytes, shorts, uh, floats, um, but it, double char and boolean being our um, basic one that we constantly use. And our non primitive data types, like we saw strings and arrays. Um, so, list, um, array list, and then variables. So we had uh, name, file, source, locations, and memory. And variables must be declared with a specific data type and can be assigned those values. So um, we have um, we can create a variable called age. We start with the type. So in this case, it's an int of age. So uh, age is the variable, and data type is int. And we're going to set this to 25. Uh, if you want to do a double, you just the keyword double uh, for a character, keyword char. Remember that characters are in single quotes. Um, and for a Boolean, we have true or false, and that is all lowercase. For strings, make sure you put double quotes around them. Okay. So we then looked at object oriented principles. So we looked at classes and objects, and we understood that classes were the blueprints for creating our objects. Uh, objects being our instances of those classes. Um, and in these classes, they can have uh, special attributes, or sometimes called fields. Um, that are variables that belong to that class. So they will be created for instances of that class. We have constructors, which will be special methods used to initialize the object. Every object has a default constructor, um, but if you don't have, if you don't create one by default, you just open close parentheses, um, and it'll just create that object. But by having a constructor, constructor you can um, better determine how things need to be initialized. So you can have multiple ones too. So based off what's given to it, it can uh, create the object in different ways. Um, there is also encapsulation, abstraction, inheritance that we talked about uh, much later. So encapsulation, when we bundle those, uh, that data, those attributes and methods together with the, uh, the attributes and methods, uh, so that we could operate on the data in a single unit or a class and have uh, use of private access modifiers to restrict access. When we did that abstraction, that was, remember, that was like our blueprint. Right. Um, so with encapsulation, we had those green concerns. With abstraction, we had our blueprint, so we could hide the complexity, uh, the, hide the complexity and the implementation details, and showing only the necessary features of the object. And inheritance was a mechanism where one class acquires the properties, which those are attributes of another class. We have our superclass and our subclasses. Okay. So, for example, here we have a uh, a class called person, and it has we're encapsulating here. We have private strings and methods. Uh, we have so a private, private string name and a private int age. Um, and then notice that we have getters and setters for that as well. Well, some getters here. Um, but we want to have getters and setters so we can have uh, access to be able to retrieve the information and, and um, mutators so that we can be able to set um, these fields to different values. Notice we also have a constructor. So that way, my, we won't have by default a person created. We'll actually give a name and age to the person. So as we continue here, we do have uh, we did talk about gathering user inputs using scanners, um, and we also use J options pane. Uh, scanner is the one I, I talked about how much better to use um, the J options pane. A lot of people like to use view pane because it's like oh my god, I made something pop up. So if that's you. Go for it. I'm not gonna stop you. Because I'm gonna it. Uh, but anyway, so uh, this the scanner class is how we use we, we use the scanner class multiple ways, but we can use it to uh, Obtain input. Okay. So uh, it is, remember, it is in the java.util package, so you must import it in order to utilize it. Um, just like every other time you create an object of a class, you put the, the type here, and then you put the variable you're going to use, the keyword new, and then, of course, you uh, will call the constructor for that class. Okay. In this case, we have system.n. We didn't see later on when we were reading that uh, file into. Um, okay, so system.print. So we could also handle our outputs, how we output things. So print, print line, and print format, that's what it is. Okay. Um, so, yeah. And then when we're scanning, though, we tell it to scan the next line so we can get the next string. 
we had next int for integers, next rule, uh, next double. Okay. So some basic methods that uh, and how to like, so how to create your own basic methods, uh, return values and determine what parameters are being passed in as arguments. So remember, a method is a block of code that can perform a specific task. So it's like the algorithm we have. So, uh, and our parameter passing, we make sure we give the data type for it so we can determine what uh, parameters it needs in order to uh, be able to run the method. And then return value, what's going to get uh, returned from that method. And it's possible to return nothing, and that's where you have void methods. So in this case, I have int. Uh, so here, so it's going to return an integer. The name of this method is add. Um, it takes uh, two parameters uh, that are both of type int, A and B. Uh, so it has two arguments, whatever it's called. And this is going to return A plus B. And so uh, if you were to call add and have it uh, set equal to a variable, it will save to that variable the result of A plus B. We then looked at uh, some decision structures. So we had our position statements, which is uh, like our if else and if else if statements. And we also saw switch statements. So our if, else, if the thing is true, then do this. Else if the thing is true, do this. And yes, if, then keep going until you get to the end. Else, but otherwise, do this. Okay. So this is how you perform different actions based off of the conditions. We also looked at switch statements. So this allows us to select one of many code blocks to be executed. So depending on what we're switching on, um, and uh, we, we will go to a certain case that, it, that has the same value in it. And we saw this with our numbers, and we also saw that you can do some strings um, in Java now. So in this example, we have um, three is a day. So this is day three. I'm going to go to case three, and we go there. Remember, we have to have breaks on each case. Otherwise, it will continue to go through the rest of them and execute them as well. It's always good to also have a default case. So we also looked at arrays and array lists. So uh, arrays were containers that will hold a fixed number of values of a single type. So when you create the array, you tell it how many um, values you want it to hold. So um, in this example here, we're creating an integer array. Remember, you have to give the type of array it is. So square brackets, because letting those array. Um, and then the variable you can use for it. But inside of curly brackets, if you're going to uh, initialize it um, from the get-go, in curly brackets, you will put the values that are going to go into it. Of course, you should match the data type. Otherwise, you're going to have some issues. Okay. All right. And then we also saw that when we do this, that our arrays begin their index at zero. So this is going to give us the one. If this was a one here, this would give us a two. So we go index zero, one, two, three, four. So the last index is always one less than the length of the entire array. So uh, different from arrays, we saw array lists. Because these are, are resizable arrays. Uh, and they're part of the Java collection, frame, collections framework. This allows you to not have to really implement the size. You can still, um, but it allows it to be just quite easily. Okay. So um, similar to arrays, we do have to give a data type for the values in it, because everything in the array or array list must be all of the same type. Uh, in this case, we have a string here, and we just put that after the word array list inside of angle brackets. We put in the cat data type. Okay. And then we use the dot add uh, in order to uh, add values to it. Okay, we get to get the values, um, and then we have our, our set as well to be able to change those values. Okay. The same type of indexes, we still start at index of zero. The great use of arrays is loops. Um, and we saw this with the while loop to do while loop and the for loop. Remember, while loops uh, repeat the block of code as long as the condition is true, so they may not run at all. Do while loops uh, are similar while loops, except they, uh, so they are similar while loops. Except they have to run at least once. Uh, so if you want something that has to run at least once, you do this, and then you can give it a condition to continue while um, that condition is true. A for loop is when you know the specific number of times. And we say know the specific number of times, but knowing it doesn't mean you have to know the exact number. It's just I know that this is going to go a set number of times. Okay. Because um, if I'm getting user input and I'm putting everything into an array list, I know. That, that has a limit to it because it has a limit of however, whatever the size is, right? Uh, remember that size. So we can get that, we can have that energy return from the size method. So we know how long it's going to go without me actually knowing the number. Okay, so we'll use a for loop there. And then we had uh, our newer type of for loops, uh, for each loops. So this will be able to iterate over an array or a collection. Uh, much easier. 
to use and having to say, hey, go to each inmate clinic. Um, we also looked at some classes that were quite useful, such as generating random numbers. Uh, we also looked at the math class, but the random numbers one is quite useful because there are times when you need things to have it around. Um, and there are some special methods in that, so if you're getting integers, you can go next to this, you know, get the next integer. Um, you can also give it a between, so a great way to kind of make a dice if you need to make different types of dice. Um, we also looked at uh, reading and writing from files. So reading from a file using the scanner or the uh, file reader or the files class or the buffer reader. Um, writing the files using the print writer or buffer writer or we also saw the files class as a write method as well. Okay. So um, here's an example you can look at. Um, so we want to use file input.txt and then scan everything in uh, or using a scanner to read it. Going to keep doing so while it has the next line. Every time it reads the next line, we're going to print it out so we can see what it is. Um, and then we're going to write to output file. We have a file. And if we wanted to, we could say, maybe say, uh, say instead of uh, putting these here, we could save them, be appended to or add it to a list, an array list, um, and then do a for loop here to tell it to write it out to the output file. So, okay. All right. Uh, we also looked at, uh, when we look at OOP, we looked at encapsulation and static methods. So encapsulations to keep their, their data private within a class and provide a public methods to be able to access and mutate or access and modify the data or get or set the data. Um, we had static fields and methods as well that belong to the class and not instances of the class. So you don't have to create an instance of the class. You can just have the class there and use those constants um, or those fields and those methods however you want as tools, uh, like the math class does. So we saw an example of that. Um, we looked at inheritance in, in abstract classes as well, and interfaces. So abstract classes and interfaces allow us to um, create kind of like a more of a blueprint of something that's going to be utilized. And interface is more so really just for like creating abstract methods. But the abstract class itself or allows you to have like a base class so that you can uh, follow off of. Um, so you could tell it, you give it some methods that it has to use regardless um, if it's an abstract class, and then um, um, some methods it has to use regardless if it's an abstract class, uh, or, but also some abstract methods where you don't actually define what it does so that later on it can. So like for instance, here you see the abstract class shape, um, and it has the, um, the method that returns a double called area. Well, how do you find area in shape? I don't know, it depends on the shape, right? So we'll say we had um, class circle, which extends shape. Well, do you know how to find area of circle? Yeah, well, we just take math.py. So here's an example. I actually use it for static fill. I'm uh, sorry, static math. Uh, so yeah, start at static fill here. So pi is a, a field that's in the math class that's set to a value. Um, and we're most finding times the radius twice because we do pi times the radius squared for the area of the circle. Okay. Um, inheritance, um, as we saw with abstract, you have to extend it. It's using inheritance, actually. Um, but inheritance allows you to take the, um, to use the fields and methods uh, from a superclass to your child, to a subclass. Okay? And we saw this example. And then you can also override methods that are in the parent class or in the uh, superclass in the sub or child class. Okay? All right. So, in conclusion, this semester we covered the essentials of the Java programming, including syntax, data types, control structures, and other object oriented principles. And working with files. We also delved into more advanced topics like inheritance and encapsulation. And with this foundation, you were well equipped to continue exploring and mastering Java. Happy coding. And one last time, go and happy tea. Ah, yeah, Java's still hot.